So today is Saturday, the 13th of February, 2021. And today is the second lunar day, the day after uh, Chinese New Year, which was yesterday. So we can take this opportunity to study about the Chinese culture and what customs are practiced around the time of Chinese New Year. So around the time of Chinese New Year, um, people who celebrate this holiday will go and uh, buy things, buy gifts, pay respect to elders in their uh, family, express gratitude to family members, and take the opportunity to uh, clean their, their house, clean the place they live in. And in a given year, there may not be a lot of time uh, because individuals may be uh, very diligent and hardworking, have many duties to attend to. So on this Chinese New Year, it's a day to have a big cleaning um, and just once a year to have a thorough cleaning. And this is uh, because if one's dwelling, one's house is not cleaned constantly, then dust accumulates and covers over everything. So one must uh, work uh, constantly to attend to this. Just like uh, at work, one may have uh, various kinds of paperwork. And if one doesn't attend to these documents, they uh, build up and build up. And similarly with cups of uh, water, coffee, or tea, if one doesn't put them away, they'll just build up and build up and one will end up spilling them and it'll ruin uh, whatever else is nearby and so on if one doesn't put them away after use. So there must be rules and regulations to uh, take care of this issue and to keep things tidy and clean. And an individual who doesn't see the drawbacks and doesn't suffer about this then they won't uh, make the rules to follow. And one can also look at uh, clothing, even if one's clothing is old, but if one cleans it very regularly, then it can still uh, look good. And so this uh, cleaning is something that's very important. So all the various objects and things that one uses, one uh, practice is keeping them clean and keeping them organized and putting them in their places. And one can see if one doesn't do this, then, for instance, bacteria uh, arises. Bacteria inside and outside will grow and accumulate. So one can look at the mind and compare this to the mind. If the mind uh, doesn't get cleaned, then all the various sense impressions and moods that come in all day long, every day, uh, they come into the heart and the sense of self arises in relation to this uh, experience of the six senses uh, constantly, all the time. And uh, attraction, aversion, fear, anger, ignorance, and so on arise as well and cover over the heart. And these uh, defilements, these obstructive states get thicker and thicker and accumulate and accumulate. And the mind gets darker and darker and more closed off so that there's no light, there's no brightness left in the mind. So in society, in our work, whether one's a boss or an employee, uh, one receives these uh, moods and sense impressions all day. And for an employee to do good work and to achieve goals that they set for themselves, they must uh, practice patient endurance. The Buddha taught um, the Dhamma for specifically for lay people in various of his teachings, and he taught patient endurance, taught to have mindfulness and collectedness of mind. Sometimes, uh, even if we practice mindfulness or wish to have mindfulness, sometimes the mind does not have mindfulness and wisdom does not arise. 
And in this state, whatever one does or thinks, uh, one does so with a mind that's dark. And if one does uh, actions or thinks with a mind that is mindful and does have wisdom, then the mind is bright and one's actions will be bright as well. So if there's no mindfulness and no wisdom, one must patiently endure, one must forbear with this condition, and one must be very careful as well. If one speaks with an angry mind, then this is uh, not helpful, that's no good. Whatever uh, kind of unwholesome or unhelpful thought speaking from this state leads to uh, destruction and loss, leads to bad results. So one must have patient endurance. And the Bodhisattva, the Buddha-to-be, built this parami of patient endurance to the highest degree. And similarly, the two foremost disciples, the right-hand and left-hand disciples, Venerable Sariputta and Venerable Mahamogalana, they cultivated the parami of patient endurance to a very high degree as well. And this practice of patient endurance of the Bodhisattva uh, led to the arising of wisdom as well. And sometimes one is able to have patient endurance and sometimes one does not have patient endurance. And without uh, mindfulness, then whether one speaks or does actions of body with this unmindful state, and again, it leads to uh, bad results, or it leads to loss. So whether in society, in one's family, or in one's work, one needs to be very careful with this and practice to have patient endurance all the time. The Buddha taught that this patient endurance is the supreme incinerator of defilements. And one can, for instance, look at the situation of a very strong mood arising, and if the mood is very strong, then one can just practice just walking away. If someone insults oneself, then just walk away. Be very careful in this situation. And if one is uh, complaining or criticizing or angry with oneself and, uh, and one observes them in this angry state, one can observe the drawbacks of anger that in this state, one is not able to control themselves. And if one sees an angry person and is angry in return, then the Buddha taught that uh, the person who is angry in return is even worse than the original offender because this person does not see the drawbacks of anger. So one must have patient endurance. This patient endurance is something that's very important in Dhamma practice. One has patient endurance with the practice of sitting meditation, walking meditation. And when rapture and bliss arise in the mind, then this medi formal meditation practice, this Dhamma practice can feel very easy. But without uh, rapture and bliss in the mind, then one can feel very chaotic and one must uh, practice patient endurance with this situation. And in this situation, uh, one practices chanting a lot, repeating one's meditation mantra a lot. And this can lead the mind to become peaceful and not to follow the various moods that arise. And when the moods are arising a lot, the sense impressions are not, uh, or the mind is not managed with collectedness and mindfulness. It's like the mind has no open space at all. It's just filled with these moods and sense impressions, just like a dirty house that uh, needs cleaning. And this house that isn't clean, just like the mind that's not clean, it has dukkha, has stress, it's uh, hot, has no rules and regulations. And then when we do clean the house, just like cleaning the mind, then the mind feels at ease. One feels happy and relaxed. And one can recollect this core teaching of all the Buddhas of cutting off um, the unwholesome 
doing the wholesome and purifying the mind. And we can see that this merit comes from actions of body, speech, and mind, and purity is found in the heart. So practice patient endurance, practice mindfulness, and with mindfulness, then wisdom can arise. And this is the right path. And we feel a sense of self. So we contemplate that there's no me, no you there. And seeing this, one sees the Buddha and the mind becomes bright. And if one feels a sense of self, then one practices to cut off the sense of self. And if the sense of self isn't cut off, then there's no brightness one does not see the Buddha. And in this state, one comes back to the practice of patient endurance. So practice this patient endurance a lot. Living together in society, living with other people, sometimes people insult or criticize us. So may you have patient endurance with this, practice patient endurance with this situation. And individuals may praise oneself, and in this case, um, contemplate the sky. And when people criticize you, and contemplate the ground, the steadiness of the earth, make the mind stable and unwavering in this way. And practice having loving kindness and compassion to help uplift the minds of others. If someone is angry, then practice loving kindness. So train the mind in this way. Training the mind in this way is the way to true happiness, a practice of generosity, virtue, and meditation. There are some teachings of one great arahant to give rise to patient endurance and mindfulness and wisdom and to cut off uh, selfishness. And this practice is to practice generosity to help, to help other beings. And this uh, teaching of this great Arahant is, not, is to not just receive gifts, but to also give. One gets, but then one gives in return as well. And this giving to each other, uh, this reciprocity of giving, this is a very good practice, just like the giving of forgiveness or giving of a physical object, just the same. One gets and then one gives. And one gives good things as well. And this is a way to cut off selfishness and give rise to peace. Because in this world, there's not just uh, good things and good moods, but there's also uh, painful or bad things and bad moods. So one practices to clean the mind all the time. And the sitting meditation, this is the cleaning of the mind, the clearing out of the mind, the clearing out of chaos and busyness in the mind. We can see in society nowadays, there's a lot of uh, social media activity, such as uh, Line or WhatsApp or Facebook or Instagram or email, uh, for instance, on one's uh, mobile phone. And this is a lot of information a lot of uh, data and one can see for instance uh, one's there's so much information that it gets stored on uh, the cloud for instance uh, iCloud and then this one storage gets full uh, the storage is totally full so one must uh, remove data remove information in order to clear out space in the cloud for more information and to clear out space when it gets full so we can compare this to our own minds. The mind receives a lot of information, a lot of data all the time, and it gets clung to as me and mine, and this fills the mind. So one must clear out the mind sometimes. And so this practice of meditation is the clearing out of the mind, the clearing out of the things that cover over the mind. So contemplate impermanence, stress, and not self. Contemplate all sense impressions, all moods in this way, then the mind uh, can be empty. And this is giving rise to the to the Buddha to a small degree. 
giving rise to a little bit of light in the mind. And one sees that there's no me, there's no you, and this is the mind that's bright. So try to train the mind in this way to make it clean. Um, body and speech that's clean, we call this virtue. The mind that's clean, we call this samadhi. And the mind that's pure, we call this uh, wisdom. So cleaning is like this, because in the heart, it's all about the sense of self. Because sometimes uh, in the world, we have this view of self, and the sense of self can be very strong. And we don't want to, and we have this clinging to all these uh, sense impressions, this clinging to the self. And if we're able to let go of this, then this is uh, very meritorious. So living together in society, we practice letting go of the sense of self, practice relinquishment, and then we can be at ease together. The world needs balance in this way. It needs not just taking, but also giving and helping each other out. So may you be uh, determined in your training of the mind. And if one feels like uh, today it's not easy to do this practice, then practice patient endurance. Practice to compose uh, body, speech, and mind within the bounds of sila. Practice to compose the mind, to make the mind uh, collected in samadhi, contemplate impermanence, stress, and not self, to make the mind pure. This is the path to giving rise to Buddha in the mind. So may you all be determined in this.